Hey everybody, Paul Lake here with another Physics Problem Solved. Uh, this is the channel where I solve the physics homework problems provided to me by my tutoring clients. Uh, take a look at the video description below for a way to contact me if you need a private physics tutor. My rates are reasonable and I'm really pretty good at this. And if you find this helpful, please like, share, and subscribe. And let's get to today's problem. Um, it's, an, it's a momentum and impulse problem. I call it a steel ball bounces off a barrier. And the prerequisite knowledge you need for this is the impulse momentum theorem. So if you're not familiar with what impulse is or momentum is, check in the description. I have a, a, a lecture where I describe in detail uh, where the impulse momentum theorem comes from and all that. So, uh, so that, that should be helpful. So today's problem, which says we have a steel ball, has a mass of 0 0.760 kilograms and strikes a wall with a speed of 14.3 meters per second at an angle of 60 degrees measured from the plane of the wall, as shown here. It bounces off the wall at the same speed as an angle is shown. If the wall uh, was in contact with the ball for 0 0.200 seconds, what average force did the wall apply to the ball? So... Cool. All right. Now, what I suggest you do, uh, pause the video right now, uh, give it a shot, try it, and then uh, start the video, compare your work with mine if you get stuck or if you just want to check your work, and or, or just see how I do it. Uh, I've been doing these problems for a long time, and I, I, think I, got, I think I got it down pretty good, and you would benefit from listening to me. Anyway, so we have a ball. So I'm just going to use this. Uh, this ball has a mass of 0 0.76760 kilograms. Strikes wall and the, the speed of the ball V is 14.3 meters per second. And that's that's both coming and going. That's, that's what its speed is. So we have the speed, which doesn't change, uh, and the direction, which does change. And, uh, and so and we, we know that it's in contact right here for a change in time of 0 0.200 seconds. Okay. And I think we're ready to, well, what are we trying to find? Um, I want the net force of the uh, wall on the ball. Wall on ball. Okay, so it's just the force that the wall applies to the ball. Now, the, we're going to hold the, the, the wall fixed. It's not going to move. Um, so I, I'll just draw these lines in here. It's a fixed barrier. And we want to know what force is required to make the ball bounce like this. Okay, and so now let's solve it. And let me shrink this down a little bit. Okay. Well, one of the things, you know, momentum, impulse, force, all these are vector quantities. And so when I'm dealing with vector quantities, one of the things the, to do is to find the x and y direction. So I'm going to make this positive y, and then down is negative y, to the right is positive x, to the left is negative x. And I do that because when I, I look at momentum and impulse, I, have to, I need to look in both the y direction and the x direction. Now, once you kind of get a hang of this, you won't really need to do this because th this will be kind of obvious. But if you're just learning this for the first time, I'm kind of, kind of overdo things here. I'm going to look in the y direction. Let's look in the y direction. Okay, and let's look at this. So, so here's the, um, so this would be 30 degrees, right? So let's look at it as it leaves the, the barrier. So this is the velocity, and this is, um, so this is 60 degrees, and this is V right here, isn't it? V, the 14.3, this is V. I'm just kind of drawing this over here. And I want to break it up into its x and y components. And here, the y component is adjacent to the angle. 
do not get hung up on cosine and sine, whether, you know, you, you, you think, oh, cosine has to be in the x direction and sine has to be in the y direction. Well, if you're looking at a unit circle or something like that, yeah. But sine and cosine are defined based on where that angle is in a right triangle. And right here, the 60 degree angle is right here. So this y component of this velocity is adjacent. It's the adjacent leg. So this is going to be the hypotenuse times the cosine of 60 degrees. And then the x component of this is going to be the hypotenuse times the sine of it, because it's right, it's opposite, it's sine of 60 degrees. Okay. So that may come, come in handy here. Um, now when I look at this, this one down here, it's doing um, the same thing, but kind of the opposite. So if I look at this and this, right, this is 60 degrees up here, right? 60, 60. And, um, and so if this, this is still the same speed, right? This is the velocity, that 14.3. So this right here is opposite. So this is V times the sine of 60 degrees. And then this is V times the cosine of 60 degrees so this is so we we need to take these these the, you know the, these velocity vectors and break them up into their x and y components because when we look at um as you're going to see when we look at um impulse we want impulse and momentum changes in momentum are are vectors and so they're going to follow the direction of these velocities um all right um so First thing I want to do is, is take a look at the change in momentum in the y direction. See, I, I do the subscripts change in momentum, lowercase p stands for momentum, in the y direction. So I'm only going to look in the y direction. Well, that's going to be mass times the change in velocity in the y direction, which is the mass times... Now, when, and whenever, well, this is the final velocity in the y direction minus the initial velocity in the y direction. See how those subs, subscripts work? I like to say it. Say it. Don't just say VF sub Y or whatever. Say the final velocity in the y direction. Say it. And, and then it will, you'll remember it. You'll, you'll you know, say what it means. Okay, so um, now, so this is the mass... Now, one thing, if I look at the final velocity in the y direction, uh, that's this one, right? This is, the, this is the final velocity. This is the initial velocity. So this is going to be, and, and the speeds are the same, but this is going to be uh, v cosine 60 degrees minus the initial velocity in the y direction, which was v cosine 60 degrees. So what do you notice about V cosine 60 minus V cosine 60? Right? It's zero. Well, what does that mean? That means the change in momentum in the y direction is equal to zero. Now what does that mean? That means that there's no impulse in the y direction. And uh, impulse is force times time well, the change in time isn't zero, it's 0 0.2. So that means the force in the y direction, the, the barrier applies to the ball in the y direction is zero. So I'm just kind of eliminating the y direction from here. I went, all that explanation is just to say, hey, look, this ball comes like this and it bounces like this. So the force that was applied to the ball by the barrier is all in that x direction as we're gonna see next. So let's take a look at the x direction. Um, and, uh, well, the change in momentum in the, in the x direction is equal to the mass times the change in velocity in the x direction equals mass times v final in the x minus v initial in the x. See, just like what I did above. Now this is going to be mass times, well, what is the final velocity in the x direction? Well, it's this. 
Oh, I'm sorry, it's this right here. Right here. But what do we notice is true about its direction, right? These are vectors. I mean, I should put vector hats on these, huh, to kind of emphasize that. Although, I mean, it's kind of implied by the subscripts, X and Y subscripts. But um, so, um, so this final velocity, what direction it's in? It's in the negative X direction. It's in the negative X direction. you got to put a negative there. If you don't, you're going to get this wrong. So you got to think, that's why I drew the picture of it. And I say, oh, okay, that's in the negative x direction, that i hat. Remember I uh, unit vectors? Some, some classes don't use unit vectors yet, but some AP Physics 1 uh, classes do. And, and th th uh, this is a unit vector, and it just means in the x direction. So it's negative this. Well, it's really this in the negative x direction. All right. Then minus, and then what is the initial velocity in, in the x direction? Well, it's, it's this right here, right? That's v sine 60 degrees. <coughs> well, <coughs> excuse me. Um, this is, so this is the change in momentum. In the x direction. Well, let's let's pull this negative v out. So it's negative m v, and then we've got sine sixty plus sine sixty. I'm just going to call it two sine sixty degrees, and so that's going to be negative. <coughs> Excuse me. I, zero point zero six zero kilograms. And then the velocity was given to be 14.3 <coughs> meters per second. Excuse me. And then this is going to be times 2 sine 60 degrees. And when you plug all that into your calculator, at least when I did, <coughs> I got a change in momentum. A change in momentum in the x direction that's equal to negative 18.82 kilogram uh, meters per second. Let me shrink this down. Kilogram meters per second. Now, that's the impulse on the ball in the x direction. But I'm, I'm trying to find the, the force. But we know from the impulse momentum theorem, and I really should have started with this, that the net force on the object times the change in time, that's equal to impulse, and an impulse is equal to a change in momentum. This is the impulse momentum theorem. So to get the net force, or the average net force, you do this, you just divide by time. Oh, and look what we get. This is really Newton's second law right here, as Newton expressed it. He expressed it as the rate of change in momentum. And... Um, as being net force. Okay, so, well, we know what the change in momentum is. It's this, and it's in the x direction, nothing in the y. Everything's, this force is going to be in the x direction. So this is negative 18.82 kilogram meters per second. Those are the units for um, change in momentum. Divided by time, and the time was given to be 0.2 seconds, so that's going to be 0 0.200 seconds. So you have kilogram meters per sec second times second is second squared, and that's a newton. Kilogram meter per second squared is a newton, so that the units work out. And when you do the arithmetic here, you get negative 94.1 newtons of force in the negative x direction. Now you don't really need that unit vector. You can just do this, right? If if you especially if you if you write what your axis system looks like in in in, in your solution somewhere, and you end up you know with a negative, and this should be marked as in the x direction, right? But but if you say it like this, that's a little better. That's a little more explicit. So the net force acting on the object is negative ninety four point one. Newton's in the negative x direction, and that is my final answer. Okay. 
So, there you go. That's a pretty, pretty good little force on this little, but you know, you expect that. Okay. Um, hey, if you found this helpful, uh, please uh, do me a favor. Give me a thumbs up and share it and subscribe to my channel. If you're a physics teacher or a physics student, uh, I produce videos like this and you're free to use it. This is, um, and uh, I'm, I'm a retired high school teacher and this is what I do for fun. And the more people that look at, I, I, my, my, <laughs> I'm not monetized or anything. I don't make any money doing this. So um, I do make money as, as a tutor, but doing this is just for, kind of for fun. But I, I would like uh, as many people to see it as possible. So anyway. Okay, well, until the next problem, may the net force be with you. Thanks for watching. That is all.